Hello and welcome to Film Physicality. In this video, I'll just be doing some short reviews about the movies that I watched in December of 2022. Let's get to it. So the first film that I watched is Hatching, because of course a horror creature feature is what you watch on the first day of Christmas. Anyways, this is a Finland horror film directed by Hannah Borgholm. This is about a 12-year-old girl who finds an egg and what hatches from it is something unexpected, to say the least. The girl must now deal with this while at the same time dealing with family issues. And so this is a great film, in my opinion. The story is very original, and it has some very creepy scenes that just look gorgeous at the same time. It also has a great performance by the daughter and the mother. The film also has a lot of symbolism, which was done very well, in my opinion. And I just really, really like this film. I give this one a 4.5 out of 5. The next film that I watched is The Grinch, the more recent animated one from 2018. This is directed by Scott Mosier and Yaro Shini, probably saying both of those wrong. So this is a modern animated version of how The Grinch stole Christmas. And of course, we all know the story of The Grinch where he hates Christmas and creates a plan to risk Christmas on Whobiel. This one, I found it to be not very funny and pretty boring instead. It mostly feels very stretched out to me. And yeah, not much else to say really. I give this one a 2 out of 5. Another film that I watched this month is Top Gun Maverick. This is from 2022 and of course we all heard this one. There was a lot of hype around this one. It is directed by Joseph Krasinski who directed Tron Legacy and Oblivion. It is the sequel to the first Top Gun, which is from 1986. And so Tom Cruise's Maverick finds himself having to train a group of Top Gun pilots to prepare them for a mission that requires feats that no pilot has ever done before. And so I just watched this and before watching it, of course, I had heard a lot of hype around it. And wow, yeah, all the hype was real. It's a lot of fun all throughout and I really, really liked it. It makes use of the first one, but does not rely on it too much, and it's capable of creating its own unique story. It also has one of the most exciting endings that I have seen in a long time in the movie. It also stars Miles Teller, which he did a great job, and it's also great to see him again in a big film since Whiplash is one of my all-time favorite films. I give this one a 5 out of 5. The next film that I watched is The Wonder. This is from 2022 as well, and it's a drama mystery directed by Sebastian Lelo, who also directed Disobedience and Gloria Bell. And so this is set in the 1800s, and it stars Florence Pugh as a nurse who is sent to a tiny village to observe a girl who has survived for months without eating. And now she has to prove if it is a miracle or not. So the movie does drag at times, but the mystery and Pugh's acting are very great in my opinion, and just help to keep the interest. It's a very good period piece overall with some very nice shots and a mysterious atmosphere that I really likes. I give this one a 3.5 out of 5. Another film that I watched this month is Don't Worry Darling, which this is also from 2022. And it is a mystery thriller directed by Olivia Wilde, who also directed Booksmart. And this one again is starring Florence Pugh and also starring Harry Styles. And it's also a period piece, this one set in the 1950s. And so a housewife lives the perfect life with the perfect husband. But then she starts noticing some pretty odd stuff and maybe not everything is as it seems. So I think this had a lot of potential. The premise is very intriguing. It has good acting and the plot twist is very good. But I don't know. I think most of it just doesn't make sense. A lot of the scenes are just creepy for the sake of being creepy without really making any sense. And then a lot of stuff just conveniently happened to her just so that she can notice the oddities happening. Also, without getting into spoilers, I don't think that near the end is ever really explained how the women start seeing what they start seeing, if that makes sense. I give this one a 2 out of 5. So the next one I watched this month is Sleepaway Camp. This is from 1983 and it's a horror slasher directed by Robert Hiltzik, who only directed this one and the fifth one. And so shortly after a very shy Angela and her cousin Ricky arrive at a summer camp, mysterious killings start to occur at the camp. So this is a very, very campy film, probably one of the most campy out there. It has pretty bad acting for the most part, but I still found it very, very intriguing and fun as well. Despite its flaws, I had a lot of fun watching the movie. And the end twist is pretty good and probably no one can see it coming. 
I give this one a 2.5 out of 5. Another film that I watched is Elvis. This is from 2022 and it's directed by Bas Lerman, who also directed The Great Gatsby. This is, of course, a music biopic about Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll. And so it is a very long movie. And then even though it is, it's still basically a montage of like small clips and very little character to character dialogue. It also kind of feels pretty fast paced, but then somehow it also feels like it drags at times. It was still enjoyable for the most part. And I think Austin Butler did a great job playing Elvis. I give this one a three out of five. The next film that I watched is Emily the Criminal. This is also from 2022 and it's a thriller directed by John Patton Ford, who I think this is his directorial debut. And so on this one, Emily, played by Aubrey Plaza, has a lot of debt in student loans and can't get a decent job due to a minor criminal record. So given the opportunity, she gets involved in a credit card scam, which of course later has consequences. And so it's a pretty solid thriller. It never tries to be more than that. There's no surprises, no plot twists, really no standout scenes. And I kind of had better expectations for it, but that's okay. I think it was still pretty enjoyable. And Aubrey Plaza is great as always. And of course, I want to keep seeing more of her. I give this one a three out of five. Another film that I watched this month is The Godfather Part Two. Um, the Godfather Part Two. This is from 1974, and it's, of course, directed by Francis Ford Coppola, who also directed the first Godfather and Apocalypse Now, and also Bram Stoker's Dracula. And so this follows two parallel stories. In one, you follow Vito Corleone, the original Godfather, as he grows up in New York in the 1910s, who is played by a young Robert De Niro. The other story follows Michael Corleone as the Godfather as he tries to expand the family business and deals with an attack on his family who is, of course, played by Al Pacino. So I slightly liked the first one a bit more, but this is a great sequel. The cast and their acting are just amazing. I especially enjoyed the storyline with Robert De Niro. And so, yeah, this is pretty much a slow drama like the others, but they're so, so mesmerizing and just fun to watch. I give this one a four out of five. Another film that I watched is Mr. Harrigan's Bone. This is from 2022, and it's a Netflix original based on the story by Stephen King. And it's directed by John Lee Hancock, who also directed The Little Things and Saving Mr. Banks. And so on this one, Craig, a young boy, befriends an elderly billionaire, John Harrigan. Craig then gives him a mobile phone. However, when the man dies, Craig starts noticing some weird things with the phone. And so this is a bit interesting with some good moments, but mostly I just found it boring. There's never really any climax or payoff. And then the ending just doesn't even feel like an ending. I give this one a 2 out of 5. The next film that I watched is Ghostland, or I guess Incident in a Ghostland. This is from 2018, directed by Pascal Laurier, who also directed Martyrs, which is one that I know a lot of people love. 16 years after a traumatic event, a mother and two daughters reunite at the house where it happened. But soon their reunion starts to take a bizarre turn. And so most of the film I found to be pretty fun. It has a great mid-movie plot twist that I really didn't see coming. Unfortunately, I think everything else after that just kind of gets dumbed down. But overall, I think this is still a pretty good watch. I give this one a 3 out of 5. And so the next film that I watched is Vengeance. This is from 2022 and it's directed by BJ Novak. This is his feature film directorial debut, but he's an actor who's known mostly from The Office and from Inglorious Bastards. And then apart from directing, he also stars on this one as well. And so this is a dark comedy thriller about Ben, a journalist and podcaster who travels from New York City to West Texas to investigate the death of a girl he was hooking up with. There's a lot more to this premise, although I think it's more funny if you just see it. Although this isn't much of a comedy as I expected, though a few scenes are really funny and really made me laugh out loud. It is mostly a serious movie though with a pretty good story and with good social commentary as well. And then the acting is pretty great as well. I give this one a 3.5 out of 5. Another film that I watched is The Christmas Chronicles. This is from 2018 and it's a Netflix original Christmas movie directed by Clay Cadis, who also directed the newer Christmas Story movie and the Angry Birds movie. On this one, siblings Kate and Teddy Pierce hatch a scheme to capture Santa Claus on Christmas Eve. When the plan goes wrong, the kids then join forces with a somewhat jolly Saint Nick and his loyal elves to save the holiday before it's too late. 
So not much to say about this one really. It's just a Santa Christmas family movie with a lot of quirky comedy. But if you just take it for what it is, you can have fun with it. I give this one a 2.5 out of 5. The next one I watched is Black Christmas. This one's from 1974 and it's directed by Bob Clark, who interestingly enough also directed A Christmas Story, which of course is I guess similar but very different from this one since this is also a Christmas movie but a horror. So this is a slasher and I think one of the very first slashers actually. And so on this one, as the residents of a sorority house prepare for the festive season, a stranger begins to stalk the house. A series of obscene phone calls start to plague the sorority and then also a girl goes missing. The police then have to help by trying to trace the phone calls. And so I had never watched this before and I did have high hopes for loving it. And I did like it, but I felt a little bit disappointed. I do get why people love it, though. It has great production value and acting for its genre, and especially for its time. The movie has a lot of very creepy scenes as well, which those I really liked. But then it also felt a bit slow to me and never really clicks like it did for most people. I don't know. I really think I might have to revisit this one in the future. I give this one a 3 out of 5. Another film that I watched is Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. This is from 2022. It is a stop motion Netflix original that's of course directed by Guillermo del Toro, which is one of my favorite directors. He has directed Pan's Labyrinth, Devil's Backbone, Nightmare Alley, and a lot of others. And of course, we all know the story of Pinocchio, but I think this one has some pretty good twist on that story. And I think this is probably the best version of Pinocchio in my opinion. But also that's not to say much because I don't particularly love the Pinocchio story. I did thoroughly enjoy it though. This was a passion project for many years in the making by Guillermo del Toro. And you can really notice the hard work and dedication that went into it. I give this one a 3.5 out of 5. I then went ahead and watched the live action Jim Carrey version of How the Grinch Stole Christmas. This one from 2000 and it's directed by Ron Howard who also directed the Da Vinci Code, Apollo 13, Solo, a Star Wars movie and others. And so this is the movie that you kind of know is bad and you're aware of how bad it is all throughout but it still makes for a very fun time in my opinion at least. I do like Jim Carrey and I grew up with him probably being my favorite actor when I was a kid so that might have something to do with it. Something that I really hate though is that there's so much tilting of the camera which was pretty weird directing choice in my opinion and basically all it does is make me dizzy but like I said I still have fun with this one. I give this one a 2.5 out of 5. Another film that I watched is Fall. This is from 2022 and it's directed by Scott Mann who also directed Heist. On this one, when best friends Becky and Hunter climb 2,000 feet on top of a remote abandoned radio tower, they find themselves stranded with no way down. And so I wasn't expecting much from this one but it was a lot better than I expected. I didn't think this premise could be stretched out and still be fun but I was pretty surprised. It does have its flaws though, including things that don't make much sense and character decisions that are not very believable. And also no one in the movie apparently knew how electricity works. I give this one a 3 out of 5. The next film that I watched this month is Mad God. This is from 2022 and it is a Shutter original directed by Phil Tippett, who he has worked on the special effects of a lot of movies, including the Jurassic Park films, the Star Wars films, Indiana Jones, Twilight, and more. And on this one, a figure known as the Assassin descends into a nightmarish pit full of monsters, titans, and cruelty. And so this was Phil Tippett's side project and he spent a surprising 30 years making it. It is a mix of stop motion and live action, though there is very little live action and mostly stop motion. It does have very, very impressive visuals with some that are super creepy as well. The only issue is that there is basically no plot. It is basically only about the visuals, which isn't too surprising considering Phil Tippett's background, but just visuals didn't really do it for me. I give this one a 2.5 out of 5. Another film that I watched this month is Cadaver. This is from 2020 and it's a Netflix original horror thriller directed by Durand Herdow, which I'm probably saying wrong, who directed only one other low budget movie called Every Win. And so in the starving aftermath of a nuclear disaster, a family accepts a charitable offer, which then turns into a sinister game. And so this does have a very intriguing premise. I really loved the mystery element during the first half. And even though it's pretty predictable, it still made me care enough to see it play out. But then the third act, I think could have been a lot better. 
Some of it was not very believable and also felt pretty generic. I give this one a 3 out of 5. The next one I watched is Christmas Vacation. This is from 1989 and it's a National Lampoon Christmas comedy directed by Jeremiah S. Chichik, which again, I don't know if I'm saying right. And so on the holiday season, Clark vows to his family the most fun-filled family Christmas ever. But then with a lot of bad luck, a lot of stuff start happening that make his promise be more challenging. And so almost everyone has great things to say about this movie and it has pretty good reviews. So when it came out on 4K, I was very excited to get it and watch it for the first time. But it was kind of disappointing for me. Also, the comedy just felt kind of dumb for me and literally just had me and my wife just look at each other like, really? <laughs> there are a few moments though where I did laugh, mostly the ones with the grandma. But yeah, I don't know, maybe you just had to see it when it came out. And maybe that's why everyone else that did loves it. I give this one a 1.5 out of 5. Another film that I watched is The Wretched. This is from 2019 and it's a horror mystery co-directed by Drew T. Pierce and Brad Pierce, who they both co-directed one lesser known movie called Deadheads, which I haven't seen. And so on this one, a defiant teenage boy struggling with his parents' divorce faces off with an entity who has possessed the neighbor next door. And so not much happens on this one on the first half, but showing the side story of the neighbors in addition to the main character, I think makes it a bit more interesting. It also has a few body horror scenes that really creep me out. And then the entity also looks pretty creepy. But also it seems random how people possessed by the entity sometimes appear creepy and then sometimes appear normal. It's overall pretty generic with a nice plot twist, but it does have many flaws. Without going into spoilers, a big one is that someone important disappears near the beginning, but then it's not even mentioned again. Like, no one even seems to care. And yeah, also some other stuff that's not really followed up on like that one. I give this one a 2.5 out of 5. The next I watched is Windfall. This is from 2022, and it's a Netflix original thriller directed by Charlie McDowell. He also directed a movie called The One I Love and a few others as well. So in this one, a man breaks into a tech billionaire's empty vacation home, but then things go sideways when him and his wife arrive for a last minute getaway. And so I really like Jason Segel's acting on this one. The movie also has a pretty good and interesting music score as well, but most of the movie just felt boring. The plot felt very stretched out and with not really a very good payoff at the end. I give this one a 2 out of 5. The next film that I watched is La Llorona. This is from 2019 and it's a Guatemalan Shadow original directed by Jairo Bustamante. And so on this one, while a criminal dictator is battling legal repercussions and the people's demand for justice, him and his family are plagued by a series of increasingly strange and disturbing occurrences, seemingly brought on by a new housekeeper. And so I was maybe a bit disappointed with this one, but I think it's due to me being in a mood for a horror movie when I put it on but then realizing it is more of a political thriller with very, very few horror elements. That aside though, the directing and the soundtrack are very, very good. There is a part near the beginning where they need to get out of an ambulance with a riot outside, and even without showing you what's outside, the scene is very, very nerve-wracking. They do a great job at making you feel the tension of the situation. This is also felt throughout other parts of the movie where they are in the house and then there is constant chanting on the riot outside and the way you always hear it and it changes as they move through the house was done very well. That being said, the film does drag a bit at times though. I give this one a 3 out of 5. Another film that I watched this month is Glass Onion, a Knives Out Mystery. This is from 2022 and it's a Netflix original mystery comedy directed by Ryan Johnson who also directed the first Knives Out, Looper, and Star Wars The Last Jedi. And so on this one, tech billionaire Miles Braun invites his friends for a getaway on his private Greek island. But when someone turns up dead, Detective Bain White Blank is put on the case. So to me, this was a lot of fun from start to finish. Even with the long runtime, it felt very short to me. Most of the jokes landed with me, even with some being very silly. The mystery element also kept it intriguing while also bringing out some pretty surprising plot twists. I did enjoy the first one a lot more though, and I did appreciate the more serious tone on the first one. I give this one a 4 out of 5. And so that's it for the movies that I watched this month. If you enjoyed it, please give me a like and a subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.